All right. Uh, first thing, I would suggest keep holding the guitar like this. Um, it has always been beneficial for me and a lot of people I work with and a lot of other players out there just holding the guitar up like this. Uh, a lot of fast and shreddy guys hold the guitar up in this manner. So, I mean, if, if it, since it feels more comfortable for you and getting your hand in good positions and whatnot, I'd say just keep doing this. There's, there's you don't need to hold the guitar like this. I mean, can you? Absolutely. But again, if you're playing better like this, I say keep doing that. Um, so I just do uh, demo speeds of 60 and 100, and we'll go ahead and just keep 100 as your uh, top speed for all this stuff, since that's a comfortable pace for you to get to. Um, yeah, so let's get cracking here. And again, we've been doing 60 and 100. One, two, three, four. Thinking. So bare minimum speeds I'd like you to do for all of these is going up by 10. So 60, 70, 80, 90, 100. Bare minimum. Um, so this way you're getting nice work done at the slow speed and then in between the top speed you're working at. Because there's a lot that can be missed playing wise. Like those subtle things that can happen if you only practice a slow speed and a fast speed. Because sometimes it feel it could actually feel weird or more difficult in the middle speeds uh, for certain things. So just want to make sure you're getting a good amount of practice in with the varying speeds. All right, uh, here we go to hundred. One, two, three, four. that foot. It's going to be very handy in the, in the near future and distant future. All right, number two. One, two, three, four. thumb to mute low E string throughout the entire chord progression here. So if something sounds funny when you're playing, just double check the pressure you have with your thumb. Just make sure it's not fretting anything, you know, don't, you don't want to put too much pressure down with your thumb. Just very, very gentle on how your uh, thumb placement is, or your thumb pressure, I mean. 
and uh, do your best to avoid letting your pinky lay flat on the strings and try your best to keep the ring finger from going flat. So we want to keep that somewhat on the tip there. It doesn't have to be completely on the tip, but like in between is fine. So like kind of at a 45 degree angle somewhat. Um, yeah, because when I'm doing this, my ring finger is also muting the adjacent string. So in this case, for that B5 chord, my ring finger will be helping to mute the G string. Alright, here we go. That's 60. One, two, three, four. too far. I'm supposed to stop there. Now I'm questioning how I played it at 60. Uh, yeah, let's do that again. One, two, three, four. little bit of string changing. One, two, three, four. For the open A5 chords, keep using your index finger to fret the D string. One, two, three, four.
Um, yeah, just the uh, way you can remember when to change strings or, or where you're going to change strings. So, so every time you do the string change, it'll be the same fret. So you got your starting place, you go up to the next set of strings and then back down to the previous set of strings and then you'll change fret position and that happens throughout this. So here we go. One, two, three, four. everything but if any questions come up before next week let me know and good luck see you next time